Hey guys, it's Charlie. I know it's been a while, uh, but we got another design video today and I want to help you design smarter and also share my perspective on AI because it's a huge topic as you guys know. Everybody's talking about it. We got designers using it in their work, including myself. And I'm going to show you guys the right way to use AI and the wrong way to use it so you guys can kind of, you know, maybe get a better understanding of how you can implement it in your work. Let's first address the elephant in the room. Why is Charlie Ping is using AI in his work? I'm going to give you guys my perspective and you don't have to agree with me. So let's not start an argument in the comments. I know there's some people out there that absolutely dislike AI. And that's totally fine. I respect your, you know, your opinion. Um, but my opinion is this. I'll say this. I don't think there's a difference between using a stock photo and an AI photo. I really don't. It's it, they're both tools that we use as graphic designers to, you know, tell a story and to create something that we imagine in our brains, right? You know, unless you're like a painter or a really skilled photographer, you might not have the ability to create what you imagine, right? So you have to look to websites like Envato Elements, Unsplash.com, Pexels, etc., in order to find the resources that you need to tell your story and get your vision out into the world. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think AI just enhances that process and speeds up that workflow because now we can, you know, do things like type out a prompt and get you know, instant results, instant gratification, really, um, and generate the images that we need uh, to, or the assets that we need to create our design. So um, I do think that there's obviously the aspect of, well, where is AI generating these images from? Like, what, where is it taking inspiration from? Is it stealing all that stuff? And honestly, I've yet to see proof that AI, like Midjourney, is stealing from people and using it to generating an image. I, I have yet to see that. If somebody can provide me proof that there's a one, you know, one to one comparison that, hey, this image that you generated, here's the original that it, it stole from. It's just a tool for me. That's really all it is. And I think it's part of our life now and we have to get used to it and embrace it or, you know, get left behind. And if you're not using it, you're probably already behind. So I'd rather just stay with the times and, and get used to it. All right. So I'm in Photoshop and I have my AI generated image that I use mid journey to generate. And here is the wrong way of using AI. Let's just pretend like I just imported this and I did this. Let me see. Let me just type out anything. It doesn't even matter. Let's just type out uh, the world. Why not? I actually like that red. Um, let's just say I did this AI art. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. There you go. Done. Throw it on a shirt. We're done. That's the wrong way of using AI. You definitely don't want to do that. That's kind of terrible, to be honest. Now, if you take it a step further, you can start to get away with this. If you take it a step further, and let's say we just select the subject out of the background. We'll use AI for that too, why not? AI is everywhere, guys. Let's just say we do this. Now you're getting into the realm of, you know, creating an original piece, right? You're not keeping every single element from, from Midjourney, even, even though you pretty much are. It's pretty close, let's be honest. Like, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's still pretty close to the original. But let's say we start blending and maybe adding some cool text effects and maybe, we do something else with this guy, like, you know, put him upright like this, which is actually kind of cool. I actually like that, not gonna lie. But let's say we do something like this. And then maybe we add some clouds on the left and right to make it more original, right? Like maybe we can take AI, hopefully this works. Let's go clouds. There you go. Let's generate some clouds and see what it does. And we start building up our background, right? Now it's becoming our own. We're, we're making this AI generated image our own. And I think that's what it's all about. So that did not work at all. Like what the hell is this? <laughs> Never mind. You get the point though. That's ugly. What the hell? You guys get the point, right? So, you know, for me, I took this AI generated image and I made this. And I think we can all agree, and maybe some won't agree with me, that this is much different. It's more creative, right? So really what it's about is just taking something that was AI generated and making it as unique as possible to really put your spin on it, right? So let's break down my layers on how I did that. There's actually quite a bit of layers here. So really what I wanted to do was create like a, you know, good and evil kind of thing, right? So the quote that I came up with or whatever is the world is evil, okay? So lately I've been having these feelings that there's a lot going on in the world. So this is what kind of, or that's what prompted me to make this. So I had this vision in my head of this kind of like this demon coming out of a pure soul, right? Like the guy is being cleansed or something. 
And that's kind of where I came up with this. So using mid journey, I typed a prompt in and I was able to generate this image. So I already knew that I needed to take the original. I don't know why I deleted it. Let's go back. So essentially what I did is I took the original, let's rotate it. And I created a duplicate copy. Okay. Duplicate copy here. And I just masked out the horn or the horns. Simple. I took it and I cut it out, filled this with black. And then obviously I did some blending and stuff. So I filled that with black. I got rid of it. And you can also use generative fill for this. So we can do this and see if it will get rid of it. Sometimes it does a terrible job, but it's okay. But that's pretty much what I did. I created one version that didn't have horns. So I can use that, you know, same character multiple times. There you go. So it did a really good job. So that was like basically version number one. And as you can see, it's still there. And then all I did, honestly, guys, was I duplicated it. And then I got rid of that generative fill. And I had two different versions now. So that's the base for this design, okay? Now, obviously, there's a bunch of effects and stuff. So you got to factor that in. So let's break down the design. We have textures and we have a gradient map, which is kind of the main engine, let's call it, of this design. And I'll show you guys the exact colors I used. So th these are super important. Like this is exactly how I got this flaming look. So really it's just placed above the main layer group here and it's clipped with the levels adjustment under. Now the levels is basically just allowing me to control the shadows, midtones, and highlights. That's literally it. So let's say I want the shadows to be more crunchy. I have full control over that, which not gonna lie, looks pretty cool. Um, and we can take the midtones and do the same thing. Obviously the highlights do the same thing. So you can see how I set this design up in a way that gave me full control over the design and or the layers, I should say, and the tonal ranges. The tonal range is the most important thing to think about when you're designing. Like if you don't have control over your tonal range of your image, you're not going to be able to control, you know, things like lighting and, uh, you know, styles and stuff like that. Like you really have to understand what an image is made out of and it's made out of different tonal ranges right and obviously um you know there's different colors as well right but uh the main thing is shadows midtones and highlights when you light up an image i'll give you an example if you look at me right here right i'm probably gonna have one side of my face that's more shadowed than the other side because i have a light right here this is my light source right and it's bouncing off of my face and it's creating highlights. I have gradations on my face, so I have midtones and shadows. So with that being said, you can take the same you know principle and apply it to your design work. So for example, if I were to, let's just say create a, uh, where's that gradient map? Okay, cool. Let's say I create a new layer right here, right? And let's just make this white, okay? And we'll take the fill or flow, I should say, down to 15%. If I start painting, you're gonna see the tonal ranges change. You see what I'm saying? And that's exactly how it works, guys. Th those gradients are being mapped to the ranges. So we have shadows on the right. This is reversed, by the way, that's why. So if I were to uncheck this, you can see what it did there. Um, but shadows are on the right, so it's opposite. And then we have the highlights on the left. So, you know, th that gradient is being mapped to each range. So if I change the midtones, for example, to a different color, you can see them update in real time. So it's simple as that, guys. If you understand that, you unlock a whole, like a plethora of knowledge that you can use and, and you can just make some amazing designs with it. But yeah, so I use this all the time. Uh, you know, like if I want to alter something, I'll just go in here, like I said, I'll throw some color in. And honestly, I should have done that. It looks so much cooler. Damn it. It's kind of making me mad. The feeling that I need to go fix it now. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's step number one is understanding the gradients and the, how the grain kind of interacts. The grain is just there to give it some texture. And then obviously I have a texture layer, which is just literally a texture from Texture Labs placed above everything. And that's it. Now let's go down to the main layers. We have the type, which is just obviously just, you know, me typing out words. That's it. So I have a group for that. And each word has a blur added to it, okay? And the reason why I do that is because um, I want to be able to control where the blur is. So let's first go to world. You know how I mentioned shadows, midtones, and highlights? When you add blur to an image, you create mo more 
like you expand that tonal range, okay? So watch this. Let me go to Blur Gallery real quick of World, and it's gonna be updating. So this is actually like a fill blur, right? So if I create a point right here, and I go like this, you can see that the more blur I add, the more that tonal range changes, thus changing the gradient map applied, okay? Remember, gradient maps affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights, so by adding blur, we're basically blending those tones together, creating a unique look, all right? So that's the reason why I do that. Now let's hide the type layer. And now, again, it goes back to the same thing I just told you. We have the smoke or flames or whatever. And if we wanted to darken these, we can literally take a brush and darken them. So let's say we don't like how light that is. Remember, it all has to do with the tonal range. So if I want to darken it up, I can do that. See, and it creates like a whole different vibe. So yeah, you gotta be careful when you do this. And if I add a levels adjustment, I can even, you know, change it a little bit, but I'm not going to do that. You guys get the point. So you can see how I alter the image now. And on the main layer here, I have a Gaussian blur. So is it Gaussian or Gaussian? Anyway, um, this is my main composition layer. So what I did is I added a Gaussian blur to it. And the more blur you add, again, it's gonna create a different look. So I added just a little bit of a blur to take that hard edge off. So this is the before and this is the after. My, in my opinion, looks way better. So that's pretty much it, guys. We have this like sort of engine set up. So everything I place under this gradient map in this main layer group is going to be affected. So really what I did is let's brighten this up first. All I did was copy the smoke like this, copied it or cut it, I should say and then added it wherever I wanted it. So let's say I wanted it right here. I can change the blend mode of this to like, let's say screen, or actually I think it's gonna be multiply. There you go, multiply, and there you go. And then I can warp it, right click, Command T, warp, and I can warp it and do whatever I want with it, see? And then if I need to, I can just blend it. And you know, using tools that I have at my disposal, I can add cool effects to it. So let's say I wanted to add that gradient map to this. I just did this fast, of course, but let's say this is our main composition. I can like not even have to group it, but I can. I'll name this test and let's add a gradient map above it. Watch this. And we already have a couple or I already have a couple that are already kind of done for me. So let's inverse this or reverse it. And as you can see, there's no other color in those, you know, midtones. So we can add another color if we want to. There you go. And now we already have that unique look and and this is where we can go crazy. We can add another layer. Let's fill this with 50% gray, fill it with noise. I know it has color, but trust me, it's working. Let's hide this so you can you know, see. And now let's change the blend mode to screen. And another thing is this noise is coming on strong, so we can add a slight blur to this as well. Maybe 0.7, why not? Now what we can do, let's put that above everything. We can technically merge this group as a smart object add a blur to it. There you go, my friends. And we don't have any blend mode on this, so we can change the blend mode. Let me see what blend mode I used on this. So I used hard light, so let's try hard light on this. There you go. And it creates the most unique look ever. It's awesome. So that's the look, and again, I can add a levels adjustment to play with what? You guys answer. Midtones, right? Look at that. It's insane. And we can stack effects. Like I can go to filter gallery. So this is gonna give it more of like a painted look. Let's press okay. And now we have a whole different vibe. It's so cool guys, I love it. And um, if we want to, we can duplicate this and we can use my new plugin called Styleforge and shameless plug to be honest with you, but um, we can add that to it and give it more of like a, you know, halftone look, just like that. And you know, this is a really cool effect too because it has posterize or posterized built right in. So you could do stuff like this and you can even add a threshold effect in real time. Everything's updated in real time. The cool thing is if we wanna add our text now, let's just say we wanna add, um, you know, uh, I don't know, create, something like that, who cares, why not? Let's throw that on there. There you go. And now we can add a blur to this. So let's just say we go, you know, maybe motion blur, why not? Rasterize. When you go to apply that blur, it's gonna automatically, you know, be affected by everything that we just placed above, which is that 
that noise layer and that uh, overlay layer. So everything's, you know, affected by that. So you can do some really cool stuff doing that too. Use AI correctly, but don't be scared of it, man. Just use it. It's a tool. Stop bitching about it. Don't just slap AI Im images on a shirt and call it done. Um, be smarter than that. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and got some value out of it. If you did, please subscribe. I'm trying to build this channel back up. It's been a while. Um, my name is Charlie Pangus. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Do people even say peace anymore? Honestly, real question. <laughs> All right, bye.